Hello and welcome back to the check side where we are going bananas about the AFLW pre-season. We're only five or six weeks away now. It's coming up increasingly fast, it seems. My name is Alex Catalano. I'm joined today by Kristen Sims. Kristen, we've got a huge month, Women's Coaching Month in July. Great to celebrate all things women coaching and footy. Yes, absolutely. And really glad that we're able to um, shine a bit more of a spotlight on that and the pathways that are being put in place um, to get some really good women involved in coaching. Absolutely. Our special guest is forging a coaching pathway for herself already at just 20 years of age. She's only been in the AFLW for a few years, but she's clearly accelerating her career faster than we can even see. Gabby Newton from the Western Bulldogs. Gabby, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. Uh, how's everything been going along in pre-season? Obviously, we've only just sort of started a few weeks in, but um, have you found it so far? Yeah, really good. It's definitely a step up from any year that I've been a part of AFLW. Um, and certainly, I think that's come from backing it up so quickly. Like the girls are still so fresh off the season that our skills and fitness and um, strength and everything like that is just a step above. So it's very exciting. Yeah, very, very exciting, I think, for everybody in the AFLW at the moment. Um, so obviously our topic for today, Women's Coaching Month, a uh, fantastic initiative by the AFL, which they started last year to shine a bit of a focus on women in coaching across all levels of footy. Um, obviously for yourself, uh, getting involved with the Northern Knights uh, coaching, heading back there, um, obviously the, co- the club you got drafted from. Um, what sort of prompted it? How did it all come about? Um, It came off the back of me getting injured and it being announced that I was going to not play in the AFLW season. And um, someone who I'd gotten close with, Natalie Grindle, is the talent manager or the head of the Northern Knights. And she said to me, oh, why don't you come down and just volunteer and be a development coach? And um, I was just so excited by the prospect of that because I was like, imagine how much I can off, off the field develop my IQ and um, just meet different people and go back to the Knights, which that place just means so much to me. So um, that's sort of how it started. And then I ended up interviewing for an assistant coaching role. So I got to um, sort of take on a bit more, Um, but I was so grateful for it. I've learned so much and learned from so many different people and it was just such a good experience. So you've, um, you've obviously enjoyed it so far then? Yes, absolutely. I wasn't sure how I'd go as a coach because the only experiences I'd have was like, at school in high school we used to like the older year levels would coach the young year levels in in school sport and I did not enjoy that whatsoever (laughs) um so I was a bit nervous but um oh the girls were just amazing and they were just so intrigued to learn and listen and um yeah it was just such a great experience yeah, well, we got to see on the uh, the doggy socials, um, I think it's on the Northern Knights socials, actually, um, Riley Wilcox, one of your yeah. new teammates who you've coached. Um, what was that sort of experience like getting to uh, see her get drafted and someone that you've worked so closely with? Yeah, it was crazy because I was obviously already watching out for her to get drafted, but I did not think she was going to be available whatsoever when we had our first pick. Um, so when I think we were at training that night, so we were like trying to, keep in touch with, with what was going on in the draft. And then randomly one of our coaches goes to me, Gabby, we're about to draft Riley Wilcox. And I lost my mind, not only because she just deserves it because she's a great player. Um, sorry, she's a great person. But, yeah, because she was just so exciting to coach. And um, I think what she has is just so unique. She reminds me of, like, um, Georgia Patrikios with the way she can um, evade defenders and stuff like that. So, I was just excited as a player, let alone to have her as a person. It was just oh, so cool. That's really, really good to hear. That's the sort of stories that we love um, with the uh, new draft process that's in place, like with those younger girls coming through that we didn't get to see before. So it's great to hear those sorts of things. Um, I also wanted to touch on, obviously, Nathan Burke has um, been a really strong advocate for women's football and these coaching pathways like how much of an influence has he been um on you not only with football but with coaching yeah yeah big influence I think um having Berkey since sort of my under 18 year I had him coach me at Metro and then transitioned straight into the doggies I think I've just picked up little things from him the whole time and I I caught myself a few times like in reviews and stuff like that just spitting out things that he would say to me 
So I think I just copied his coaching style completely. <laughs> um, but I learned heaps from him and he was someone um, who was great to talk to during my coaching, just with like the frustrations and the good parts. And um, we joked a few times that I was going to take his head coaching role. I was just going to retire from being a player and just go <laughs> straight into coaching. So, um, But he, yeah, he was really great for me for my coaching. Well, you better watch his back in the next few seasons <laughs> then because clearly you're on the rise. Yeah, I'm like coming for his job. <laughs> <laughs> um, doing it with the Knights, um, how did it sort of change your perspective? Um, obviously, your first couple of seasons getting to actually be out there, but then going back to the sidelines, seeing it from a different perspective, um, having to actually, you know, I guess direct the girls and um, look at footy from, from other angles. Uh, how's it sort of changed your understanding of the game and um, your own footy? Um, oh, astronomically. Yeah, it's certainly, I, I think the most important stuff that I've learned is more about the off the field, just how much work goes into getting the players out there. And even something as simple as reviews and your individual reviews, getting clips from your coach. I think when I was a player, we'd be waiting like a day for our coach to send us clips and I'd be like, oh, how has she done it already? Like, what's going on? But it actually takes you, and I learned, like it takes you a whole day of work to watch the game and then watch for each individual clip. So just like appreciating those things so much more, appreciating all the staff that goes, who do so much work to get you out there. Um, and then just all the on-field, more technical um, and game style sort of things. I learned a lot from our head coach, Lee Clark, um, and our other coaches to our, our development coaches. Um, it was just such a, like, it's very much a community at the night. So like the boys coaches would come along and help me out as well. So um, I just learned so much from so many different people. Very grateful for the experience. It seems like at the Knights, especially, they've got a strong focus on developing women in coaching and pathways in general. Um, I believe it was an all-female assistant coaching team or something like that at the Knights yes, last yeah. season. So, yeah, what does that mean to you as well? Oh, my gosh, so much. Um, I think I never had a lot of female coaches. I played basketball as well and just along the journey, I definitely I, – it would be like seven, eight male coaches. and. Um, while it seems like such a small thing and it shouldn't matter, it really does because having a like strong woman to look up to, I think as a player just like really inspires you. We had um, Kirby Bentley, Mel Hickey and Natalie Wood last year at the Dogs and to have those three strong females leading the way as well was so cool. So I think joining Ines and um, Laura Fraser at the Knights, I just had that feeling of like, oh, this is so cool. Like imagine being a 16 year old girl and you've got these three female coaches teaching you and showing you that there's a pathway in sport and you, you can do this when you grow up. Um, I think I just had like a few of those, wow, this is really cool sort of appreciation moments. That's, that's so good to hear. Um, so I just wanted to touch as well, obviously not just with the coaching, but with that season last year, what did you learn sort of sitting on the sidelines and, and not being Right. sorry what was that last part um what did you learn like not being able to participate um and play throughout the season how's that changed things for you um completely changed everything I think probably in my first year there was a lot of pressure about being like a high draft pick and all, and all those sort of things and I was really worried about my performance and then my second year I was just thinking about being injured the whole time and oh this is going on this is going on I can't like I'm not playing my best because of X, Y, Z. Um, and so taking a step back from that now and just watching the girls this year and being that more support role, I just realised how absorbed in my own performance and how I was going I have been. Um, so I think that's been one of the main takeaways is that I just need to take a step back and just like not be so self-critical. And I think the more that you can influence your teammates and the more that you can take that pressure off yourself, the better you're going to perform. Um, so I think that's been one of my biggest takeaways. And then just in general, um, just how horrible the rehab process is. It sucks to sit on the sideline and not be able to play. And um, I think we had such a tough year at the Dogs getting COVID after round one and, um, you know, the quick turnaround between games. Um, and, like, watching your teammates have to work so hard and, like absolutely try their best out in the ground and then the results 
did did come but also didn't come. It's just heartbreaking to see. Um, so I think all of that will motivate me going into the next year, but certainly I won't be as it sounds wrong to say self-centered, but not so obsessed with my um performance and be a bit more of a better teammate, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um obviously it's still so early into your career, you're only going to be turning 21 right before the season starts. Um, but now that you have had this time spent coaching, is it something that you are aspiring towards keeping on doing and um, looking to the future of, I don't know, moving up the ranks, potentially um, coaching in the AFLW one day? Is it something that you want to do? Yeah, I think uh, I really want to go back to the Knights and do that again if the seasons work out that I can do that. Um, but yeah, it's so weird because if you had have asked me this this time last year, I would have been like, I never want to coach. I'm just not interested in doing that. But now it's just, it's so rewarding. And I think part of it for me was that I feel that the Knights gave me so much. Like I'm here because of what they gave me and half of it is just like I want to give back or feel that I can give back what they um, gave to me. Um, so I hope that I can do that. But, yeah, I think I'll see how I go. Um, but I'd love to uh, keep coaching into the future and see where it leads me for sure. Cool. Um, so we sort of want to look at as well um, – what's your position going to look like this year? Obviously there's a few gaps to fill um, up forward. Where do you think you're going to sit with all the changes? Yes. Good question. (laughs) Um, I think without giving too much away, it's going to be a very different look for our team um, going into this season. Um, I will be playing quite a bit more down forward. Um, So just working out what that looks like. Um, I think we'll be much, quicker smaller forward line without the likes of Izzy and Bonnie um so yeah I'll be spending a bit more time up forward which I'm really looking forward to I actually haven't kicked a goal in AFLW yet so (laughs) fingers crossed if I'm spending all this time up forward I better kick a goal and better get the results on the board so what you're saying is round one next year we need to be looking out for you leading out of the goal square sure yeah yeah I'll be saying (laughs) girls clear out of the forward just kick it down to me (laughs) Uh, how's it been working with the the new girls that have come in? Obviously, we talk about the forward line and um, Daisy Bateman uh, has been such a live wire for North Melbourne and now you get to have her at ground level uh, for you. How's she been in preseason so far? Yeah, she's been great. Daisy and I go way back, actually. I know her from, um, like, junior sporting days. And so when we got her, I was just so excited just because she's such a good human but such a talented footy player as well. I think we've been missing, especially with um, Maka being injured last year as well, um, we were missing that sort of lively small forward who can give you like a couple quick goals like that. So um, having days, even just at training, like showing off her skills and stuff like that, I think it's been something to look up to for the other girls and hopefully something that will be really important for us going into this next season. And are you going to be directing her to hand off a few more handballs to you if you're in a good position? Oh, or maybe yeah, even absolutely. not in a good position. I would say, Dave, give it here. You've had enough. <laughs> You've had enough. Uh, I guess leading into the, the season now, like we said, we're only six odd weeks away. Um, what's the focus for you? I suppose, obviously, we're spending so much time out on the sidelines doing rehab and everything. Um, is it just getting that confidence back in your body? Um, have you been doing full training basically so far? I'm not too sure what the timelines are on um, shoulder reconstructions, but has it just been go right from the start, get right back into it? Um, I wish. No, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a very long rehab process, longer than the usual um, shoulder reconstruction. Um, so I think it's oh, been about eight, no, a year and a bit. Um, so I'm still rehabbing. Um, but I should be back to full contact maybe in a few weeks or a month. Um, so until then, um, I do mostly all parts of training just without that contact. So, um, yeah, nearly in everything. Certainly not all stations go from the start, but um, my main focus is just I really want to get my read for the game back. Um, and as much as, as much match sim and game situations where I have to make decisions, as much as that I can get, um, I think I'll try and do because I think that'll be the key going in, just getting used to playing footy again. Yeah, awesome. Well, I think that'll do us there. Thank you so much for joining us, Gabby, and best of luck for the upcoming season because it's going to be such an exciting one for, for everybody this year. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much.
Thank you. Thanks.